Hi everybody, I'm Mike McCrory. And I'm Kat McCrory. And Kat lives in a pretty old house with a pretty old front door. So today we're gonna make a new front door for her that's a little bit more modern. And it's gonna be made out of quarter sawn white oak with a little bit of frosted glass. So let's get started. So that's the wood we're gonna use. It's four 10 foot long pieces of white oak. And this is gonna be one heavy door. So let's go cut it up. So we're gonna cut this to be 86 inches. The door is 83 inches. So we'll cut three extra inches just so we get some spare. So when you're cutting, you're gonna do the cut, okay? When you're cutting, you wanna do just a light cut all the way across and then come cut it some more. You can do it in three passes. You don't have to do it all at once. Okay. Okay. Okay, let's put on some hearing protection. Where's the other one? I'll get it. This one is going to be used for the horizontal pieces and we're going to cut each piece to be 28 inches, maybe a little bit more, we can adjust it later. But the first four or five inches of this piece has a knot in it and a crack. So let's cut that off first and then we'll measure the length. Yeah, so when you're pulling the saw back, you, you don't want to pull it with it running through the wood. Mm. Lift it up, pull it back, and then do another cut. Okay. Alright, let's start measuring this. So, I'm going to measure it to be 28 and a half. So we've got a little bit of excess, just in case we don't cut it precisely here. through okay we're not going to bother running it through the saw we're just going to run it through the jointer a couple of times along the edge to make it narrower and then it'll be narrow narrow enough that we can run it through the jointer oh, okay. okay and we want to do this face side first and then we'll tip it up and do the edge one more time so that it's 90 degrees okay I'm going to set this just so that it takes off almost an eighth of an inch, because we've got plenty here. In case that wasn't clear, the board's a little bit too wide to go through the jointer, so we're jointing the edge first, just to make it a little bit narrower, and then we can joint the face of the board. Kat was having a lot of difficulty pushing the board through the jointer, partly because she's not very heavy, but also she's not wearing very appropriate shoes for this type of work.
Okay, that's fun to watch once, but it's not very safe for her to operate like that. So I asked her to go change her shoes. Okay, we might need to get you a different pair of shoes. Maybe some running shoes that have somewhat of a grip. What do you think? Even with those shoes, she was having difficulty, so an extra 50 pounds certainly helps. Okay, so these longer pieces are a little harder to run through the jointer because they're so long. Mm -hmm. I mean, I could do it, but it would be better to have a helper on the back end. So if you hold it at the back end, sure. don't lift it up, just support it. And then when I get halfway through, you can go to the other end and support the, the outfeed. Okay. And now we're just planing it down to the final thickness. Okay, so now we need to cut these to be six inches. These are the vertical pieces. We want them to be six inches wide. And it's gonna be a little tricky to cut because it's a lot of wood to cut at one time. And we're gonna use this feather board. Can you hold the end of that? And this will help to keep it pushed against the fence. Okay, and now we're ready to go. Okay, now we're going to cut these horizontal pieces to width at seven and a half inches. So one thing about how you're standing is when you're when you're standing over here and you're pushing it through, you're having a tendency to push it away from the fence because you're on this side of the board. And what I would do is I would stand over here and push it toward the fence with your left hand mm -hmm. and use your right hand to push it through. Okay. All right. All right, so I'm gonna do a little defect repair because we've got a lot of defects in the wood. Nothing serious. So I'm gonna fill it with this Starbond medium clear for this first crack.
It's a lot faster than using epoxy. And that's a fairly deep crack, so I'm going to let it soak in. All right, and then I'll spray it with a little bit of activator just to let it set, okay? And then for this piece, I'm going to use brown CA glue. Let it soak in. And for these two, I'm going to get some tape so that it doesn't drip over the edge. So now what we want to do is we want to cut a slot down the center of the board. And the reason for that is because the horizontal pieces are going to fit into the slot with a tenon. Mm, okay. okay. So it's like a long mortise. I want to put it in the center of the board. So I'm going to approximate the center. I'm just going to eyeball it because um, this dado set is a little bit less than a half an inch and I want to cut it a little bit more than a half an inch, but the actual size doesn't matter too much. And the way we're going to get it in the center, so that's a little bit off center so that when we flip it around and cut it from the other side, we'll have a, s a slot that's a little bit more than a half an inch, I think. And that'll be the, about the right size. Can you hold it so it's level? Oh. Okay, and we're going to do it in three height passes. I'm going to lower the blade a little bit so that the saw has to, doesn't have to do too much work. And then we'll raise it, cut it again, and then raise it one last time and cut it again. Cool. Okay, and we're also going to use a feather board to help keep it in because if this comes out away from the fence, we're not going to have a straight slot. Definitely time to clean those blades. The groove is two inches deep, so that's how long we'll make the tenons, or the tongues. Now that the CA glue has cured, we'll just sand it all down. Okay, so I've set up this stop block so that everything's going to be consistently cut and I've set it to be 28 and an eighth inches because the glass is 24 inches and we're going to put a two inch tenon on each end. So that gives us a little bit extra because we don't want the glass to be super tight fitting. So now what we want to do is cut a tenon 
and I've got this position just a little bit shallower than what we needed and we'll sneak up on the cut so that it fits perfectly into the slot that we just cut. Um, I'm going to start by testing so I don't want to use the stop block yet because that's up here. If we make any mistake with the test, I'm just going to cut the outside edge, do the testing, get the height adjusted, and then I'll use the stop block to get it right down to the exact length that we need it. Okay. Okay? Okay. That's a pretty good fit. It's tight enough that it's going to make the assembly a challenge, but clamps will help pull everything together. All right, now that we've got all these tenons cut, we have to cut the other end. And this, one, this is the one where you have to be really careful because you don't get any second chances. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to reference off this shoulder and I've got the stop block set. And then I'm just going to push it against there and cut the inside edge, cut the shoulder, and then I'll work my way out. Okay. Okay. Cool. And now it's ready to glue up. Okay, let's just put some parchment paper under here so that it won't stick to the table. All right, so we've got a couple of glue brushes and let's just glue this up. I'm gonna put the glue on and you brush it. Yeah. And you wanna brush it here, here, and on the end. Not on the other side. Not yet, we'll flip it over.
We've used tight bond extend to give us a little bit longer open time because it's going to take a while to get everything in place. Yeah, they're smaller though. It's like it's smoother to put on. Mm -hmm. This for some reason feels like. Get the pieces of glass so that we can space this out. They're right there on the floor. Okay. What happens if glue gets on these? It won't matter. I'll just go to push them out. Okay, now no one. we're going to start pushing it all together and we want to make sure that the parchment paper doesn't get squeezed in between the wood and the other piece. Okay, so now we're going to cut the strips of wood that are going to go around the glass inside the door. And so when you're cutting, just remember to push against the fence as it's going through and then use this push stick at the end. And this is thin enough to fit between the blade and the fence. Just use this push stick at the end. So now we need to get these pieces cut to the right length. So what I've got are some blocks and that's going to elevate the glass. The glass fits right in here. And then we're going to have to cut these to length. All right, so this is just a little bit less than 24 and an eighth inches. So let's cut the strips to be exactly 24 and an eighth. So a little bit large and then we'll cut and cut and cut and sneak up on the fit so that it fits really tightly. Okay. okay. Sounds good. A little bit too long, right? Mm -hmm. So go back to the saw and trim it down just to just a hair. Perfect. Okay. And now we have to measure the two vertical pieces. Right, now we can glue this up and we want to use just a very small amount of glue because we don't want it bleeding out because that'll be a big cleanup job if we have to do that. Okay, so just a very small amount of glue on this edge. Okay. You can always add more later if it's not enough, but... Yeah, here, I'll do that. Can we put these long ones in first? Yeah. <clears throat> you know, this is um... There we go. Okay, and then we're going to Push it all the way down, and then we're going to tack these in with some brad nails. Oh, 
Okay. So I wasn't expecting this, but there's a little bit of variability in this uh, seal around the outside edge of the window. So I've made this strip that we can put in there. And I think it adds a nice detail as well because it steps down. And by gluing on this wood, because it steps down, you won't see the glue line. And when the wood's not the same color, it won't matter as much. Okay, so we just need to glue these in place. The last thing I want you to do before we apply the finish is to round over this edge on the front and the back on both edges. And the way you're going to do that is you're going to run this bearing along the edge and that's going to give you a nice straight round over. And this is a 16th inch round over bit. All right? Okay. And now with the panes of glass removed, I'll apply some finish. Normally when you think of Total Boat, you think of epoxy, but they have all kinds of finishes and not just for boats. So this is a spar varnish that I'm using and it'll be perfect for the door. Now the door is turned over and I will apply some silicone sealant and then drop the glass panes in.
the wooden strips on this side won't be glued in place. They'll just be nailed. That way, if one of the panes of glass ever breaks or cracks, then it'll be relatively easy to remove the strips of wood and replace the pane. Now I'm going to trim the ends of the door, but I'm going to leave the door still a little bit long and that way I can trim the door to the appropriate length when I'm on site. Now I'm at Kat's house and she had to go to a wedding this weekend so she wasn't available to help. But I had a friend and my wife helping because this door is too heavy for me to do alone. I think the door is somewhere between 130 and 150 pounds with the glass in it. So it's pretty heavy. I'm not going to show every step in detail but I'll show some of the major things. I'm marking the locations of the hinges and then I will cut the mortises for them. Some people would use a chisel for this, but I find it easier to use a router, especially with a hardwood like white oak. The router gives me a nice flat and consistent depth and then I can clean up the edges with my chisel. Before using the router, I like to cut the edges of the mortise with my chisel just to mark the outline. I have a couple of 2x4s clamped to the door and that helps to keep the router in the same plane. I didn't have my proper self-centering drill bit with me, so I'm just using a nail to mark the centers of each of the holes, and then I'll drill very carefully to keep the drill bit in the center of the hole.
And then I'll do the same thing on the door jam. I bought commercial grade hinges because the door is so heavy and I didn't realize it when I bought them, but it turns out that commercial grade hinges by definition do not have pins that remove. So that meant that I had to line the door up against the door jam with the hinges on the door. Um, the benefit of that is that everything's gonna line up. The difficulty was that the door was so heavy that it took three of us to hold it in place to mark the locations of the hinges. It took a lot of effort to get to this point, much more than I expected, so that's all we could accomplish this first day. We started the next day by cutting the door threshold and just cutting a little bit of the aluminum off the end of it. So the door fits pretty well, it just needs the door stop, and the weather stripping, the door hardware, and the brick mold installed. Here I'm drilling pilot holes for the hole cutter. I'm using a two and an eighth inch hole cutter. When I went to the store to buy the hole saw, they didn't have any in stock with the sawtooth style cutter. And so I bought one that had a carbide tooth cutter and I thought that would be better since it's carbide tooth, but it was very difficult to control and it was dancing all around. So for the second hole, I didn't want to make a mess. It was too risky, I thought. So I went back to Lowe's, to a different Lowe's, and I found one that had a sawtooth cutter and it worked a lot better. I made the doorstop with a saw kerf in it, and that works perfectly for the kerf style weather stripping that fits right into that little groove. I was pretty careful when I removed the trim around the door, but it turns out that the trim was what was holding the plaster in place because it wasn't stuck to the lath at all. It's not a big deal because we're gonna remove all the plaster and lath, insulate the house, and then put up some drywall.
So I gotta ask, would you make it? <laughs>